Well, tonight we have special guests, titans of local theater, creative, creative producers, directors, actors, and bon vivant. We're talking, of course, of Michael McNamara and Rory O'Connor who have a new play, Lonesome West, that is about to premiere at Gloucester Stage, also called the Gorton Theater. Michael, welcome to Cape Henry Report. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah. It's uh, our pleasure, and uh, uh, we're excited to talk about our play. Uh, we're going to be performing April 4th through the 14th, Thursday night through Sunday afternoon. Uh, it's a tremendous play. Uh, it's written by the uh, Quentin Tarantino of Irish playwrights. <laughs> this guy is, writes very explosive stuff. It's... Uh, uh, I'd have to say it's not for the faint of heart. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's not a comedy. It's, it's a comedy. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a comedy. Yeah, yeah. It's got. Uh, but an Irish comedy is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> well, well, an, well, an Irish comedy. Let's say it's uh, it deals with issues. Uh, of uh, family dysfunction, what is a relationship? I mean, most good plays are all about mm -hmm. uh, relationships, and just as life is. And uh, so we have these guys, and they uh, they have a very dysfunctional relationship. There's a ton of gallows humor. There's a lot of poetry, as in all great Irish literature. And there's a glimmer of hope. So. Uh, Rory and I, the history of the play, I'll let him tell yeah. about that. Give us the history of the play and then tell the me about The history of part. the play. Well, I'll tell you how I first came upon it because after we just finished the Seafarer, myself and Michael went into the Davis Square Theatre and we went to see the, the Lonesome West. In Somerville. In Somerville, yeah. that's right. And uh, I was so moved by it and, uh, and it was just right after the Seafarer and right away it caught me and uh, the great Billy Mulready and Colin Hamill and... Uh, Daddy Woodhouse, and I forget who the girl's name Carmel is. No was the Carmel O'Reilly was the director. And it was that good that I went back to see it three times. And then you called this and, guy and, and said, you've and got he, to we, see we, it. We, we went together, oh, okay. the first time together. And I remember sitting right next to Michael during the intermission when half a day went off at the, at the intermission, and I turned around to Michael. I said, Michael, we, it's time to get back to the drawing board. <laughs> so I remember saying that to him. You remember what I said that to you, you Michael? Yes, yeah. I do. Because they were so good, and it was just a great play. And the thing about the play was that, that they were speaking, even though it was in English, you know what I mean? It was hard to understand because they were speaking in a very strong Irish brogue. So when I got, when Michael decided to, and thanks to Michael's great passion, he said, we're going to do it here in Gloucester. We're going to do it. And I said, oh my God, like, you know what I mean? So here we go. So he, when he gave me the script, I could understand what the play was really all about. Well, I can tell since you've seen it, you've been so influenced because now it is kind of hard to understand that Irish brogue. So you have really internalized. So that is well, really well, well, where well, well they were influence. because, like you know, the thing about the the, the, the way it was had because they were taking on a, a kind of like a gay, uh, almost a, a Gaelic accent. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was and so it thick. He needs you to could have cut it that. with a knife. It was so it was thick. thick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that even for me, that coming from my, I couldn't understand half the things they were saying. <laughs> but that was the beauty of reading the words in the play, and that. And then when I read it, I thought it was one of the most wonderful plays I've ever read. You oh, know what I mean? And I haven't read many of them, but. The way Matt McDonough really captured the, the culture and the words and the language and, and about relationship and and the, and the word Lonesome West, like which I found uh, was, was interesting because when I, as, as as I went through the, the, the rehearsal every time, you know, the more you get into the play, the deeper you begin to understand mm -hmm. the, 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 the 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 culture of where, how the play took place. And it took place out in a very out in Connemara, and Connemara way back a years ago, agriculture was very very. Um, very little of it and an awful lot of people live in a very lonely life out there in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. it's like a moonscape yeah well you guys have done several irish plays right. together and that often it goes with your plays because i remember the yes, other yeah. plays yeah. they were way out in the way out on the western part of ireland there there and and certain Peninsula. things yes. begin to happen yes. uh, when yeah, you're yeah, that yes. isolated. And that, well, another thing about the production that was done in boston which was very noteworthy and i'm sure we, and both Rory and I commented on it, mm. which was that uh, half the audience was under 25. Oh. Mm. Mm. And oh. I thought, my God, what is, he's, mm. he's obviously speaking to contemporaneous audiences. Right, right. This is not right. just a crowd right of, of mm. older people who mm. are the, mm. I'll know, be interested uh, to see if you say we had similar it will be, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. Well, we're hoping. We're yeah. hoping that the young people are yeah. going to come it's and see the show. Usually going the other way. Yeah, yeah usually yeah. the other way. That's and right. so um, you're running two weeks, uh, uh, April 4th. Mm. That weekend that begins on a Thursday. Right, that's a pay-as-you-can yeah. performance, mm. oh. and uh, we have a young lady who's uh, a uh, 
a student at uh, Salem State. She's playing the the, uh, the this girl's is, part. This is Kelly Newman. This is who Kelly is the Newman, new man. the new man. That's <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and wait, you have that crazy Italian. My favorite Gloucester <laughs> actor, Jay Dupree. Jay Dupree. No, that's guys. right. We've got to mention Jay. Scott Jay's it. doing a great job. He is Jay's, a great guy. Jay yeah. just couldn't be here tonight. He uh, has a, a teaching engagement, uh, uh, something to do with the uh, public at the yeah. uh, O'Malley School, yeah. and so. But he wanted to come, but. Uh, Jay, Jay's a great man. Well, it's great that because he's a great director in his own yes, mind. Obviously, you yes. have done a ton of directing, and yeah. Rory, you know, he's got the overview and perspective. Yeah. Uh, so it's so interesting that you're self-directed, as you say, with an occasional professional. Right. But I'll bet you can listen you to each other. You get so much more done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you can say to the other actor, "This is what I need," mm -hmm. and you break down a scene, you break it down into all the different beats, and you work on it. Mm -hmm. It isn't some person from the outside That's trying right. to trying to uh, impose a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. I'm the director. That's it's right. my You've concept. Got to do this, it this is way. community yeah. theater. Mm -hmm. So our thing is is to just we're doing it out of it's a labor mm -hmm. of love. Mm -hmm. Well, why do it any other way? Because why do it? Any the other you one. can get into it and you can agree to disagree right. so you don't get too right. upset but it's Rory yours says, yeah. you're going and you're creating something every night that you're not trying to please some other person mm -hmm. you're just trying to do the best job you can and express yourself in mm -hmm. the most artistic fashion possible now do you find that you as an actor do you cook it up and uh, fresh every night or do you tend to do it exactly the same that line you'll say the same way or do you recreate the more I do chemistry? it the, the the more variety there is I try to re live it every night mm -hmm. as the person I am that night I mean I obviously yeah. I, I'm I'm uh, confined by the lines mm -hmm. and the blocking and so forth but there's always new textures mm -hmm. and new shades that you can add every night plus if, if your fellow actors are listening which is the key to good acting yeah. bang you get a different you, performance you out know, of work absolutely yeah. and you connect in a, in a way that's uh, really exciting and it, it and the audience picks yeah. up on that they, and when actors are really comfortable with what they're doing and playing there's nothing more sa satisfying for an audience because it's like that's what they came mm -hmm. for well, your wild Irish plays that you do always seem to have a great catharsis that takes place, where one character, or all of the characters, <laughs> there is some, like, sea change, that scary yeah. one in the bar. Yeah. What is, Rory, the catharsis in this play? What is the great... Don't reveal okay, too fine. much. All right. Don't well, can't reveal you show too a little much. leg or something <laughs> and just give uh, uh, us uh, a hint? Can you ask me the question again? What was it? Uh, the question was, a lot of these Irish plays seem to have a great catharsis where the whole thing chains and goes clunk like that play that we all did. Right. So w is there one in this or would you like to The Seafarer. You well, remember well, where the cards were turned over? The Seafarer was the same thing. Yeah, th yeah. It, it is that. Like, I mean, put... Yeah. I think that's the human condition in any way. Yeah, right and especially with all the isolation and, 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 of the Irish. And, that. But if you didn't have that, you wouldn't really have a very exciting play in any no, way. You know no. what I'm saying? And so you've got to give the playwright some license to wrap things up at the end yeah. in a way that yeah. offers something positive. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they... And, uh, most yeah. of them do, you know. Yeah, they don't yeah. want you well, leaving yeah. the theater with your head hanging down. Yeah, yeah. No, and, that's uh, true. But, uh, but the great thing about this play is that it's, it's very, very funny. <laughs> and the it's language, and, and even though at times it's shocking in the sense of shocking, but it, 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 it balances itself out beautifully with the great language and the humor and stuff like that. And it's a really, it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to be, to, to be even participating in, in just learning the lines and just looking forward to be able to say it, you yeah. know, in this Matt McDonough's way or the, the culture's way. That's great. And so we're very excited about getting ourselves out there, like, you know, and really laying ourselves Well, I will hand it to Gloucester Stage, too, that they now are using their off-season to allow quality local performances. I know they've been doing it for a couple of years now. you got to love them. You They're do opening up the place to, a to exactly. the community. And they should have done right. that And which is where art, you and I both know that's where art lives. Yeah. In your life, in our lives. It's nice to go to with a symphony, and not the symphony, but, you know, to yeah. see high art, uh -huh. let's say, and mm. travel to Boston or to New York City mm. and see mm. a Broadway play. Mm. But in our lives, it's mm. can we do it? Yeah. Mm. And so to get an opportunity to use that great totally. space. I went to, to New us. York. I saw uh, Arthur Rubenstein, and I said, hi, Art. You know what? <laughs> we only have a minute left. What do you want to tell Gloucester about your play, your show? And give me the dates. April 4th that week. April 4th April through April the 14th. 11th, and they're Thursday through Sundays. That's right. Okay, and they nighttime shows, what, 730? 
Nighttime shows at 7.30, Sunday's at 3. It's cheap. It's what, $18, 18 if you got the right. money? $10 but because, for students. There you and go. And opening night is pay as you can. Yeah, and okay. we're going to have everybody that has a student ID opening night and is under the age of 22. Free admission. Hmm. Opening wow. night. Wow. Okay. That pay as you can. Now. I believe that's called papering the house. <laughs> <like> well, uh, <laughs> well, we uh, want to get the young people to come and, and talk it up. A theater sells by, yeah. by word of mouth. By word so of you've mouth. you've got to get those mouths talking. Right. So, so we, would, we just think it'll be a great yeah. evening. Something that Gloucester hasn't seen, it definitely is, it's like a hand grenade going off on the stage. Well, and a great a, night of yeah. entertainment. Well, I appreciate it that. It really so, is a great night. Rory O'Connor. The Wild Irishman That's and Michael the McNamara, the right. Irishist Irishman of existence. Thank you for joining us here on Cape Fear Report. Thanks for I'm having us. Still remaining as your host, Golden Dad. And <laughs> Cape Ann, keep on being you.